There's a saying that tells us that into every life a little rain must fall. Mary, our blessed mother, enjoyed many wonderful and sunshine days during her lifetime. But she also had to weather many a storm. Rain fell upon Mary on the day she presented Jesus in the temple. On that day, she encountered a holy man, a man whose name was Simeon, a man who was filled with God's Holy Spirit. On that day, Simeon told Mary that his son was destined to be the rise and fall of many in Israel, that he would be a son who would be contradicted, and that a sword will pierce her heart so the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed. Mary had absolutely no idea what Simeon meant by these words. However, she knew he was a holy man. So instead of ignoring these words or pretending that they weren't there, Mary treasured these words in her heart. And very fortunately, she did. Because as her life went on and Mary had more experience of life and she became more aware of Jesus, her son's mission in life, and the more she pondered on the words that Simeon gave to her, as she matured and reflected upon those words, some of the meaning came to light and she had a greater understanding of what Simeon told her. Shortly after the presentation, Mary once again faced a storm in her life. Rain fell down upon her when King Herod proclaimed that every young boy two years of age or younger was to be executed. Obviously, this troubled and upset Mary. But she did not let this immobilize her. She did not bury her head in the sand. She did not remain there, hoping just for the best. Mary dealt with this storm in a positive and creative way. She and Joseph took their son, Jesus, and fled to Egypt. And he resided safely there until King Herod died. He passed away, and they could return back home to Nazareth. When Jesus was 12 years old, Mary experienced another storm. This time, however, Jesus himself was at the heart of that storm. As observing the holy days in Jerusalem, and the community was returning back to Nazareth, everybody joined that caravan except the Lord. And a couple of days into the journey back to Nazareth, Mary and Joseph realized that the son was not only not with them, but he was not with their acquaintances or friends. He was not in the caravan. So they beelined back to to Jerusalem. And for three very tenseful days, they searched for Jesus. Up the streets, down the streets, in the alleys, in the byways. Very unsuccessful. As the days were going by, became more and more upsetting and tense. And finally, they walked into the temple. And there was Jesus, their son, in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Mary approached the son because she had a question for him. Why, she said. Why did you remain here and not come back to home in the caravan? Do you realize how upset I am and your father is? Why does he come back with us? And Jesus responded in a very unusual way. Did you not realize that I had been my father's house? that I had to be about my father's business. 
What did he mean by that? Mary had no idea. But again, it's over son, she realized that there was some powerful response contained in these words. And once again, she treasured these words in her heart. And it's fortunate that she did. Because as her life went on and she became more and more involved in life and became more mature, experienced life a little bit more deeply and becoming more aware of her son's mission in life, when Mary reflected and pondered those words, the meaning started to unravel and become clearer to her. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, there's another saying that many parents experience. Little children, little problems. Big children, big problems. When Jesus was 33 years old, he was no longer a little child. He was a man. And when Jesus was 33 years old, Mary underwent the severest storm of her life. That storm occurred on the first Good Friday, when Jesus, her beloved son, was crucified and he died. And Mary was there. She was there for the entire ordeal. Mary was there to witness her son trudge up Mount Calvary dragging that cross on his shoulder, being physically abused, whipped and spit upon and pushed and pulled, being verbally abused, and Mary heard those abusive words. And when the Lord, her son, reached the top of the hill, Mary remained there. She remained there as sorrowful and as painful as it was. She could see those soldiers pounding those nails into his hands and into his feet. She could hear the steel upon steel, bang and bang and bang. As those nails were penetrating his hands and feet, that sword that Simeon talked about was piercing her heart. And Mary stayed there. She stayed there at the foot of the cross for those agonizing hours when Jesus was just in total pain. And she was there when he gave up the ghost and expired. And finally, when his lifeless body was taken down from the cross and laid in her arms, the Pieta, Mary held on to him until he was finally put to rest in a borrowed tomb that was hewn out of a rock. Mary became the mother of sorrows because there was no sorrow like unto her sorrow. But make no mistake about this. Mary is not the myrrh of sorrows because many storms visited her in a lifetime. Now, that's not the reason why Mary is the mother of sorrows. Mary is the mother of sorrows because she did not ignore the storms that she faced. She did not pretend they weren't there. She did not just ignore them and hope for the best. Mary is the mother of sorrows because she faced all the storms that visited her in her lifetime. And she dealt with them in a positive and creative way. This coming Saturday, September 14th, is the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, there's still many young and older children of Mary for Mary has great concern. The poor, the hungry, the suffering. Those who are sick, those who are lonely, those who are forgotten. 
Her children suffering from any kind of an addiction, the drugs or alcohol, or pornography, or gambling. For all of her children suffering from injustice and violence, in our world was a great deal of injustice and a great amount of violence. Mary is concerned about the unborn and the elderly who are unwanted and disregarded and many, many others that Mary is concerned about. But unlike 2,000 years ago when Mary walked among us, Mary is no longer with here in that way. But she's still with us in her children, her young children, her older children. She begs us and she implores us not to ignore the storms, that troubles that, she, that we can see. Not to pretend them away or wish them away or put a head in the sand or just hope for the best. Mary encourages us to face all these problems that she sees in life among her children and to deal with them in a positive and creative way just as she did 2,000 years ago when she lived among us. So today as we progress in our novena, pray for the grace and the wisdom to recognize and to celebrate all the wonderful days that are part of our lives, the sunshine days, just as Mary did. But pray also for the grace and the wisdom to recognize the storms that visit us, and not to turn our back on them, not to ignore them, not to just to wish for the best, but to deal with all the storms that visit us in a positive and creative and grace-filled way, just as Mary, our mother, did. May God be praised.